How does independent journalism, like a publication like Truth Out, keep its independence? Well, with me on Truth Out interviews is the publisher of Truth Out. Joe McArae is here, and we're going to talk a little bit about the way in which this organization is structured so the content can remain truthful, independent, and compelling. Joe, welcome to Truth Out Inter Interviews. Thanks for having me, Ted. So let's talk a little bit about your role as the publisher of Truth Out. Right. Well, my job basically encompasses um, making sure that we have the, the funds and the resources to, to bring you the editorial content. Uh, and it also includes um, how we get that content out to people uh, via things like social media. Um, but a, a huge part of it is fundraising, uh, because the thing that's unique about Truth Out is that we are almost entirely reader funded, and we don't take any uh, advertising. We don't take corporate sponsorship. Um, we don't rent out our email list to other uh, organizations so they can email our subscribers and, and ask them to sign uh, up for their list or to give money to someone else. Um, so, yeah, it, it's the vast majority of it is, is readers donating. We do have some foundation funding, but um, we've always been almost entirely reader funded, and that continues to this day. So, so our fundraising is, is a huge part of what we do, and it, it's the reason that we kind of are who we are, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I work in the, the media as well, and I know that uh, oftentimes advertisers can direct the editorial content of news and other content within the programming. And that's why it's key to have that kind of independence, to make sure that it is people who come to the site, who read the site, that they're the ones that are the primary donators uh, of uh, or make the primary donations to to truth out to keep that kind of independence alive because it can happen you know if you if you took corporate sponsorship there could be a sway in the editorial content I think there's a there's a number of different ways it can happen um, there's there's the kind of direct thing of, of advertisers pulling out or threatening to pull out if they don't like what you publish and then there's there's a sort of indirect aspect to that which is I think when you're budget revolves around, when your funding revolves around bringing in advertisers first and foremost, um, it all becomes about what story that you publish is going to get the highest traffic. And and that's sort of how I think people can fall into the model of, uh, you know, clickbait or, you know, you know sensationalism. How, how do we get the most number of eyeballs on, on a story at any time? Now, obviously, we want as many people as possible to read what we publish, but we publish stuff because we think it's worth publishing even if it's not going to be the most clicked on story of the day. And and I think there's a fundamental difference there, whether it, it's really like the, the cart driving the horse or vice versa. Like, are you publishing the stuff that you think should be out there and then trying to get as many people to read it as possible? Or are you just trying to publish what you think will be most popular in order to say to companies who you want to advertise, this is how high our traffic is. We're recording this in December, and this is the time of year that most publications put together year-end lists. You know, what were the top stories that trended? And I was reading through the annual report, Truthout's annual report, and looking at the stories that were just the, sort of the highlights of some of the stories that were published for the last 12 months. And comparing that to, say, like the New York Times or locally, I live in San Francisco, the San Francisco Chronicle, totally different. I mean, the kind of stories that Truth Out publishes versus, say, the New York Times and even the San Francisco Chronicle, you could take the LA Times, whatever paper. There, there's a lot of crossover on those mainstream papers. But with Truth Out, I mean, talk a little bit about some of the stories that you found really compelling uh, this year. In ter I mean, in terms of some of the, the big stories from this year, you know, like the, the Ferguson protests, and which have now become sort of national, a national movement is a, is a, a big thing for me. Um, we've done a lot on the science of climate change this year. Uh, our staff reporter, Dara Jamai, has, has produced a lot of um, summaries of the, the science of that, which are, are often quite bleak reading in many ways. It's, it's really like unvarnished, uh, this is how bad it is type news. Um, but I think that's hugely important as well. And, and Dar has also reported on uh, some projects that are being done uh, in response to that. He's also done some kind of very like localized report. He had a great series on uh, New Mexico and specifically um, 
pollution in New Mexico that's very much a, a byproduct of government corruption, essentially, that sort of corporate control of the state. Um, so that was a really great series. Yeah, yeah, I've had Dar on, I think he was on twice, maybe three times on this program. And every time I read his his uh, research and his pieces that he posts on Truth Out, I always compliment him on how thoroughly researched they are. Yeah, he. I mean, he joined us uh, in, I think, February now of, of this calendar year, and, and he's been a huge uh, boost to us. Uh, our reporting team on staff uh, consists of, of him, and then we have um, Mike Ludwig and, and Candice Burnt, and the, the two of them as well have done some great stuff. I mean, Mike is really, uh, he, he covers a lot of different bases. He, he did a whole, like last year now, he did a really important series on offshore fracking in California. Um, and this year, he's, he's also done some really great work on uh, harm reduction programs and criminalization um, around issues that including uh, like heroin use and sex work. And, and then Candace's work, uh, again, like has covered the gamut, but some of her, her best stuff this year, I think, has been on um, kind of police abuse uh, even before, you know, that had really come to national attention. Uh, I think it's something that we've been kind of hammering away at for a while. Definitely. Let's go back to social media, because that was one of the things that stuck out in the annual report, was how much social media plays a role in getting people to Truth Out as a site. That means that the people who are not only influencers, but just everyday folk who, you know, say, this is an interesting article, I think, you know, people ought to read this, but it's a key driver to to the site. Yeah, it is. Facebook is, I think, a, a, single, so, a single biggest source of referrals um, still. And, and, uh, and both Facebook and Twitter are, are places where we've seen our, our audience really sort of grow and grow. Um, Facebook, this year, uh, we passed uh, 500,000 fans of the page. We're now at about 565,000. Twitter, we passed uh, 100,000 followers. And, you know, th those are th th those kind of metrics are, are not an end in themselves, but what they show is, is that more and more that's how people get their news. I mean, social media is how I get my news as well. I, you know, I, I, I usually get stuff recommended to me there rather than necessarily going to a specific site other than Truth Out. Yeah, I think that uh, you and I probably used RSS uh, to get news, to sort of aggregate news prior to social media. Now, Twitter, you can even do it with any one of the you know platforms, Google+, Facebook. You can aggregate um, your news that way, and certainly things are going to pop up, but you can also follow a number of sites. And yes, I think that that's, that's how people are starting to to be aware of things that are trending and um, that are important to them. Um, I, I find that kind of interesting because obviously there's just so much to read. I mean, you can follow 30 or 40 publications and have them in one place. But if you were to try to seek out those 30 or 40 publications, it would be quite, it could be quite a chore unless you, you had them all bookmarked. But this makes it very simple for, for most people to follow not only what's trending, but what's interesting to them. Yeah, and I, I think it's one of the reasons why individual word of mouth is something that's really important, um, maybe more than it ever was, because um, people people really trust that, and, and I trust that. Like a, a great sign to me that we've that we've published something that's that's really affecting people is when you sort of see people you know sharing it without you you having to ask them to, right? So like when you can, that's one way to tell when things are resonating and. And when people, social media offers a way for people to to reach a bigger audience than just directly telling a friend. But at the same time, when it when it is a real person saying, "Oh, I saw this story and I think you should read it," it carries more weight than just when we put it out on our own official accounts. I mean, that's an important part of what we do. But it, it means a little more when people say, um, "You know, you should read this." And and in terms of fundraising, it means a huge deal when people are willing to to say, "Hey." I think you should give money to Truth Out, you know, and it's people who don't work for us who are just kind of recognizing what we do. Um, and that's something that I, you know, I'm really always happy to see that happen on social media. It's, it means a great deal. Looking at the annual report was a nice look back at the year that was um, and, and the, the amount of the kind of stories that were covered within the publication, the way in which 
the funding sources come in, how social media plays, the role it plays in syndicating that content. What do you, what, what do you hope to see for 2015? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I I really hope that um, we can continue uh, publishing some of the new voices we found this year. Um, our, our staff reporters and staff writers and columnists are, are, are great. Um, like the the, the freelance uh, aspect of it is also huge, and and there's certain people who who've written for us for the first time in the last year. Certain voices that you know I, I'd like to see. Um, sort of build on the work they've done and keep going. In terms of, of truth that's future, uh, I want to see us continue to to reach a wider and wider audience um, to, to you know to keep publishing some of those new voices and also to to discover new ones. Um, and from a from a sort of a business financial point of view, I, I want us to to just sort of cement and and continue uh, to have the sort of uh, security we currently have, right? Because we are a nonprofit, so we're not about turning a, you know, we're not about bringing in like more and more money. But what we are about is paying our interns and our fellows, um, paying people for for solid reporting work, and and it's something that, you know, it's uh, it it can sometimes be challenging because we because we you know we we don't take the advertising money and some of the things we I mean we've turned down money this year. Like Google came to us and said, "This is how much money you could be making if you ran ads," and it was kind of painful to say, "Like, no, no, we're still not going to do it." But it, it is really important. Um, and so, like, it, in the next year, we're we're really, from a business point of view, what we just want is for that reader support that's been shown to continue. Um, it's it's really important in making sure we can keep doing those other things and 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 keep. Uh, you know, keep paying people for for the work that we think is is deserving of being published. One of the things a lot of people don't realize is that the staff at Truthout is part of a union. They're they're a unionized workforce. So, a a, a site that uh, you don't really hear about websites, especially news websites specifically that aren't connected to, say, a major publication in some way of having a unionized workforce, but Truthout does. Yeah, we. I mean, we are very unusual in that sense. Um, e- I mean, even just within like independent media, there's not many organizations that are unionized, particularly um, organizations that actually have a, a sort of union shop as opposed to allowing staff to join the union. Um, and I think for for a digital, you know, for an entirely online news organization, it's uh, that's independent. It's it's pretty unique. Um, and it was absolutely when I when I joined Truthout, uh, which is I think three years ago now. Uh, it was absolutely one of the things that drew me to the organization, um, and and I think it's yeah, it's one of the things that that sets us apart again today. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for being on Truthout, letting the readers know a little bit about behind the scenes, how things work, how they can continue to support Truthout's mission and its content, and certainly the the writers who bring such. Great content to uh, to uh, readers around the world, and also just a, a little peek about how independent media keeps its independence. I mean, you even talked a little bit about how Google came to you and said, "Look, if you just ran ads, look how much you could make." And you said, "Well, we're gonna have to turn that down." Sorry, Google. That's why we 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 say like the readers' donations really make a difference. It's like that you know ease the blow of us having to to say no to the corporations. It's uh, really important. Oh, absolutely. And, and thank you uh, for being on. I really enjoyed our conversation. It was quite enlightening. And thanks for, to you for watching Truth Out Interviews. I'm Ted Asfragadu, and we'll see you next time.